now we're recording. All right, so we're behind the scenes. Yes, and my phone is vibrating all over the place and I don't know, understand why. Mine oh. is off. Look at that, I got a notification on my phone that says watch 34, because I always just name the oh, I was video, like, what? What, we, what, what, what we, you know, what number we're on and then I add the name in later. Got so, it. I'm like, doesn't it know it's me? That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm already in there, but whatever. Okay. Uh, I'm good. Are we good? <laughs> I think we are good. I've I think we are good. good. I know. I'm ready with I, dog treat. So I'm going to give it to him as soon as we hit record and pray for the best. <laughs> we'll be fine. It'll be fine. We can always edit it out. Work. We can just stop talking and I can just chunk a check out. Um, all right. I'll so I'll you. lead it in you with this. It in? And I, yes, I, I bet you think the way that I do, but then I wonder if we both take a step back and think, position ourselves as newbies, might this be something that motivated us or is it a slippery slope toward negative behavior? All right. Awesome. I can't wait to hear it. All right. Okay. Do you want to do the welcome? Okay. You're doing the welcome. I'm just checking. Okay. Okay. Episode 30 frizzle. Okay. Hello and welcome to episode 34 of the what you can, when you can, AKA Wick Wick podcast. This is Carla in Texas. And Ronnie in Maryland. Is it winter there? It's not winter here yet. No, but our nights are getting down to like the mid fifties and a few oh, mornings. I love that. Yeah, a few mornings it's been in like the 45. We woke, I think it was Tuesday, Tuesday morning. It was like 45 and no one was prepared for it. I know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was, I shouldn't say no one. I was, and I was like, wait, what? I need a sweatshirt. What's happening? My barometer is, and I don't think we have to edit this out. I boob sweat. I don't know if it's an aging thing or what, but I'm like, ah, oh, yay, no boob sweat this morning when I walk the dog because it gets so hot here. Even this morning, I woke up, took the dog out at like 6.30 and it was already 75 degrees. See, I would love that. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, when it's not the rainy season, I do because I'd rather, having lived on the East Coast for so long, you don't have to shovel the darn heat and bundle yes. up and, all, and it's like the shoveling. The heat does not impede my driving. I'll take it. I get the, I like the fall. And I, but I do get annoyed when everyone's like, like, people were counting down in like early August. I'm like, can we enjoy the summer just for a few more weeks? I know. And then with the pumpkin this and pumpkin that or whatever. Oh but, my gosh, yeah. Um, and I do. I love when winter squashes are available and like the produce change is over and all the, even like the summer, like the, the late summer berries, like blackberries are phenomenal right now. Yeah. Like I love the, that aspect of it. And then I'm good probably until November. And then I just want it to stay November until. April. I know. <laughs> and that could be the I always say I'd rather have snow than rain, but I don't know. Okay, here's my question for you before we segue into something I want to spring on you, because I've been seeing this all over Facebook and it happens every year. Are you pro or I guess it'd be anti candy corn? Are you like uh, ick or love? I'm like indifferent. Is that me? <laughs> I think. It I grew up with it and I ate it as a kid. I don't. Did you bite off the ends and stick two together and all that? No, I, I would. It. I would try to bite off each layer of color perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I don't yes. know how you can be anti. I guess because I loved it, but I also was the weird one who was like, "Yeah, circus peanuts, I'll eat them." I yeah, know. I know. If I have a friend who's like obsessed with circus peanuts, uh, yes, I. Uh, I don't buy them. I just feel like it's just another way. I mean, I we get them in East, you know, in the baskets or not. Oh my God, it's not Easter. It's <laughs> not in my mind. <laughs> yes, don't rush us. Actually, yes, please, great. no. Yes, uh, but in you know trick or treating, they'll get them in their little fun packs or whatever from certain houses, and I don't know. They just are. I feel like I'm not. I know. I need to try them again. I'm sure they were. Actually, I need to look and see. I bet they're filled with gluten and just crap. But I imagine them be tasting like wax. Everything I thought as a kid, oh, this is amazing. And then I try it as an adult. I'm like, oh, this is disgusting. Yeah, no, it's just sugar. It's just sugar. It's just – they don't even really have a flavor. If I remember, it's just sweet. Halloween. <laughs> okay. Everybody's been talking about that. It's kind of a segue into this next thing that I saw. And I don't know. You tell me whether I should share where I saw it. But I found it in a popular fitness magazine. And I don't know if this is the same for you, but this happens all the time to me. People ask me what fitness tracker I use because I do always have one on more because I could air, 
I could easily err on the side of not getting enough steps. Even on days I do traditional cardio on my elliptical, let's say 20 minutes, that could be it for a stretch of like hours and hours. If I'm not cognizant, able to look down and see, wow, it's noon and I've done 2,000 steps, I <laughs> might want to get moving. So people always ask me, I don't know if you've seen like the misfit ones that are kind of fancy looking and then there's the old school puller. So people are always asking my advice on those. Okay. And this, which is why I got sucked into this article because I was like, oh, it's a new thing. So the title of the article is, is this health number the new 10,000 steps? Referring to the, that's supposed to be our goal as humans to move 10,000 steps per day. Which I always wondered who, who, who came up with that. Is it like the eight glasses of water thing? I think it's like the eight glasses of water. Yes. Thing. It's just an accepted, and, hey, 10,000 steps sounds like a good idea. <laughs> and isn't it amazing how, I mean, it shocks me on days where, let's say I do 30 minutes of the elliptical, which I guess maybe it's not counting the steps. That's not very many steps. And is that worse than, anyway, slow walking around the neighborhood? It gets confusing. I think it's too arbitrary. But I thought this was going to be something totally new and cutting edge. So I click on the article and it says, the newest wearable health technology will now measure how many bites of food you take during a day, giving, a, you, an, giving you a numerical goal to help reduce mindless snacking and encourage mindful eating. Basically, mm -hmm. this bite counter is to diet what Fitbit is to exercise. That's so creepy. <laughs> I thought the same thing. And I wanted to ask you because it talks about a study where college students got this gadget that counted how many bites they ate. And then they were told to eat a regular meal. And after having the information of how many bites they averaged, what they averaged during a typical meal, they were more aware of how many bites they took and they ate less. Um, I don't, I find this fascinating for, okay. Bites is totally irrelevant though, depending on what you're biting. Like, Thank like my first thought was just that I'm yeah. eating 12 bites where my mouth is bulging with food. So well, it's no, like, but, but even like type of, like I have one bite of butter or a million bites of, of celery. Cauliflower. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what, what, like, I just don't understand the, I mean, I guess I kind of get the number of, you know, re my, reducing the mindless eating, all that I get, but like, you could just accomplish that by writing down what you're eating. <laughs> I thought, and I think we've gotten yeah. so into technology. I mean, I love my, what do I have now? A, I have the basic, basic, basic Garmin, so I don't have to charge it. It runs on a watch battery. Mm. I think that I love having this. Really, all I look at are steps and what time it is. I don't even use any of the fancy pieces of it. Right. But have we gotten too technology oriented? oriented you're right i hadn't thought about density is, like it, well, it's, about me, or what it is just that do you think it would make a and this i also thought about how long you and i have been working in this arena let's say i am just first day changing my habits would this make you a more mindful eater or not i don't i think it would spiral me into obsession yeah i'm not sure i mean i'm i'm usually pretty good at putting myself back at what would have maybe helped when I first started, I don't, yes. I don't know if I, I feel like it's, I don't, I don't, I, I try to shudder calling things stupid, but I do feel like it, it felt like a, <laughs> yes, it felt like a huge reach to me as well. Yeah. And yet I thought, uh, maybe I mean, this to is each their own, own. if it works for someone, that's awesome. It's not like they're doing anything to harm themselves, but I just feel like, I mean, but then again, again, coming from where I'm coming from now, I'm pulling away from so much, like, I don't even have a tracker now. I don't, I haven't used a tracker in over a year, not a step tracker. What is your watch? I know I don't have a watch. So I don't know. I got nothing. I got nothing. Like <laughs> yeah. So I'm. I am just at a place where I want, in a weird way, less information because I feel like none of it is serving me right now at all. So I think I'm probably a bad person to ask about it because I don't, I don't get on the scale. I don't wear a tracker. I barely, like I went running this morning for the first time in, I don't know how long, but I, uh, I almost didn't even turn on the little runner app to track how long I was running because I thought, I was like, ah, I'm just going to run. I don't really need it. But then I thought, ah, I'll turn it on just so I know I actually did a mile. But even then I was like pulling back on the 
wanting to track it and know exactly how long I ran, exactly how many calories I burned, and exactly how many, you know what I mean? Like I was just, I'm getting very um, less specific as I get older. And I think it depends on your definition of mindfulness, because for me, this would be the opposite. For me, mindfulness, which I don't achieve very often, I'm the first to admit, oh my gosh, if I'm eating a late dinner and the child is already asleep, I am, I'm sitting in front of the TV and I'm hanging out with Ryan Sirhan on some Bravo TV show. But for me, mindfulness for eating would not be how many bites I took. It's mm. nothing, no information, like you said, and savor yes, it. Yes, yeah. Well, and I like... I, I, I don't, I, I don't know. I'm like a recovering overeater, I guess. Uh, and, and, and I always will be, I don't think if it would have helped me because I think what actually helped me was, cause I feel like this is still fighting yourself then, right? You're still, you're still trying to reduce them or like uh, what helped me actually was instead of say reducing the number of bites I'm taking, it was finding things I can bite <laughs> that, um, allowed me to bite as much things as I was biting and still be able to like maintain or lose yes. weight. And that actually was what really helped me like moving to a more plant-based diet, eating, you know, squash instead of potatoes. Cause they're, they have like, actually I've been, I was been meaning to blog about this and I just haven't had the time, but, um, I, I went through all my old books and it came across volumetrics. I don't know if you've ever read volume. Oh, I have. I've forgotten about it's that. It's one of my favorite books ever that probably had the biggest impact in how I approach eating, which would be the opposite of this. It's not the number of bites you take. It's, it's the density of what you're taking in and the fact that like you feel full. Like I think her, I can't remember her name. Actually, I have the book like way back here. <laughs> so I was thinking about giving it away. Oh, on the blog. It was such a Barbara, big deal. When it came out. Barbara Rolls. And I remember it not being a big deal. I remember like stumbling across it and thinking, oh, this is genius. Why? No one's talking about this. Why is no one talking about this? Um, but yeah, her name is Barbara Rolls. And I think I'm pretty sure if I, I haven't read it in like 10 years. Uh, but the idea that we kind of all have a fill point where we feel satisfied. Yes. And that you can fill it with lower calorie dense things and still have that satisfaction um, and then still lose weight, you know? So again, if you eat a pat of butter, it's, you know, whatever, 200 calories, Yes, 200 calories yes. of celery. And you're like, I feel like I just ate, you know, a whale and now I'm stuffed. Um, but, but you're more, you know, so that idea of, so I feel like that's more important. I, I feel like learning that, um, and really being mindful of calorie density and food and reducing, you know, like you can severely reduce the number of calories in dishes by like reducing oil or cheese and things like that and still feel as satisfied. I think that's way more important than I took 10 bites at dinner. Like I don't, that's just, I know so it's it doesn't that. make any sense. Yes. Yeah. Because the when and how much yes. isn't necessarily mindful. Well, and I'm, I'm a, I am a snack. Like I sometimes just want to eat. Like it, I, I just want to eat. So that's why I started to shift to like popcorn instead of chips because I can make yeah. three cups of popcorn and, and, you know, continuously eat while I'm watching a movie versus, you know, you have three cups of potato chips and you've just taken in your calories for the day. So, um, yeah, I've always been like more of a, a volume eater. So I don't want anyone to reduce the number of bites I take. <laughs> and it was, and I found this fascinating. I was super excited because I thought I'm not even into technology, but is this the next big thing? And I'm with you. I really thought it is not, it'll be interesting to see whether it goes because I don't think. My gut is it's not going to go. I mean, that's just my, my, my intuition. I, I feel totally like, agree with you. I feel like there, um, there'll be a small niche that kind of get into it, but there's a niche for every, I mean, there's a niche for not eating. <laughs> and, just they're, and they're trying to say that the, a few less bites, and it's interesting, it comes with education. I mean, I really can think of back in the day, I had gained 40 pounds, I'm shorter, I fit into none of my interview suits, and it says a few less bites per day over time, almost wick wick. Yeah, very wick wick. Adds up to a change in your body composition and what you weigh. But it just doesn't hold up over fact because a few left bite, a few less bites of some super calorie dense food might take a long time to make changes, and a few fewer bites of non calorie dense food makes you so hungry and then it backfires because you binge. Well, yeah, and I I think too you can do something you can have the same uh, like approach like less bites from from having 
Well, A, you don't need a device to do it. You can, but my thing, my, my thing was <laughs> always, bracelet. yeah, my thing was always um, like leave something on your plate. Like you could have a, a very mild, easy to do rule like that where it, it translates to you having less bites. Like, so I went through a stage where I was like, you know, I'm just going to leave something on my plate every time. Cause I was, yes. you know, a member of the clean plate society where you grew up in a household where you, you ate all your dinner, even past the point of fullness. And so for a lot of us from that error, <laughs> we never really learned what our uh, full point was. Like, you just don't, you just you, like, on, you just don't know that, you know, I watch my kids and they leave stuff and I don't force them to eat it because they, Hey, they're full. Okay. You know, of course, there's the whole parental. If they want a snack in five minutes, I go, well, there's your dinner that you didn't just eat. Yeah. Um, Our mantra is I bake her food and I start to say something and I'll hand it over and she says, stops me. I know, mama. Eat what you want and don't what you don't. Because there's no percentage in. No, exactly. Well, my kids, they, my, they say the same thing. They say, I know I'm not going to allow to have any snacks unless I finish my dinner later. And I was like, exactly. So, all right, get up from the table. Bye. You're <laughs> full. Yes, totally. <laughs> So, okay. Talking about trackers, I know you wanted to share something about your run. Was it about not tracking? Okay. So no, well, I just wanted to celebrate, pat myself on the back for running because it's been something I haven't been doing. And it, what so, made you do it? Okay. That's the funny story. So I'm laying in bed and I actually fell asleep really excessively early last night, which I haven't done in a long time. It was like, I say excessively early, but I say 930 maybe, which is super early. For that me. is early. I was waiting. I thought it was going to be like <laughs> 11. <laughs> no, no, I mean, it's early. No, that's for me. That's pretty early. And I told the husband early. and I felt tired. You know, you just feel, I was like, you know what? My eyes are heavy. If I hit my head, hits the pillow. I'm totally going to yes. be up. So I told the husband that I said, I'm going to go up and we like, he's like, well, what do you want to watch? I go, you can put anything you want on TV. Cause as soon as my head hits the TV or my head hits the pillow, I'm going down. <laughs> <That> is <laughs> exactly what happened, which is exactly what happened. So I woke up, of course. I will, it was one of those sleeps where I woke up at two and I went, oh my gosh, it's only two. I get to sleep more and because my body's Is like, that not the best. Feeling? Oh my God. That was really honestly the best feeling in the world because normally, you know, 930 to two is what? 930, 1030, 1130, 1230, it's four and a half hours. So it was like, it was almost, I usually only sleep for about five hours a night. So it was that time where I was like, my body yes. knew this is around the time I get up. Not and that's time. why I wear my tracker because it glows in the dark. I need one of those Timex old school Indiglows because I love that. I kind of like to know if I only have 15 minutes and I brace myself, yes. but I love being able to see. I need to dark. know. I can't sleep in a room without yes. a clock. I can't sleep. I just won't sleep because I have no idea what time it is. Yes. So and then I fell back to sleep. I fell back to sleep and then I woke up at 3.30 and then I looked at the clock and I went, oh my gosh, it's only 3.30. This is awesome. <laughs> like I felt like each time I woke up, I actually was feeling rested. It wasn't an annoyance waking up. So then um, the cat, we have our cat. Oh, I dog sat a dog. I, I think we talked about this a lot. And ever since then, my cat's just not the same. It's like she's constantly in our yeah, house. That's really funny. What's happening? Is there a dog here? Are you sure there's no dog here? Oh, you mean the cat's not the same? The Literally, like, not, yeah. not the same to you. It's like I made the cat neurotic now <laughs> because I dog sat for my friend. That so, is really funny. So she has an obsession with going in my son's room at like – four or five in the morning. And I think it's because he has a bunk bed and she wants to sleep up high. So he asked me, he said, can you not let her in my room? Cause like my husband would wake up, he'll hear her like banging on the door and just let the door. But then I guess she jumps up into the bed and like crawls right up his face and starts purring at like five in the morning. Oh and my, my son, so I said, okay, we won't open your door. We won't let her in. It's fine. So now at four fifty, it was four fifty. I hear knocking and I literally woke up thinking someone was knocking on my door at five in the morning, but it was the cat banging her body against my son's well, that, My dog will do the same thing. It's just like they, they're getting in. Yeah, so she's like, I'm up. not not giving up. So then I had to shoo her away. So I shoo her away and I lay back in bed and I look at the clock and it's 4.50 and I think, I feel great right now. I feel really well rested. I go, what am I going to do? Sleep for, I was going to wake up in a half hour, go to the gym anyway. And then it hit me. I should go run a mile. And I thought, yes, why aren't I running right now and taking advantage, being very wick wick of this extra half hour I have? Um, and so I threw on my gym clothes and I threw on my running clothes and I just walked right out the door, which was like, I can't believe I'm running. Like I haven't run in forever. And then while I was running, it felt, I was like, oh yeah, I remember this. This is nice. <laughs> and you know, hearing you say all that, I thought so many different things. The first part is, 
your perspective, and I'm really like this too, but I have friends that struggle with it, of when you woke up looking at your watch and thinking, oh my gosh, it's two. I have all this time left versus it's two. Why am I up? So it's, I love your attitude yeah, on that well, one. It depends. That happens to me sometimes. I think it really depends on how much sleep I've gotten. Cause there are times where I'm like, Oh, I can't believe I keep waking up in the middle of the night. I just want to have a good rest, like a good solid rest. But I think in a weird way, my body already had its rest. Cause I slept for a good five hours yes, before I woke up. Yeah. yeah. So then it was like, Oh, this is nice. Yeah. Yeah. So I wish I could bottle that reaction every time I see the clock in the night. <laughs> and it made me wonder this because it made me think of when for years I did, I just sat all day long. What was I doing? I guess I was doing a lot more writing. Now I've kind of incorporated the whole, truly it's, we talk about it all the time, but it's how we live. I incorporate walks around my house during the work day and I've really incorporated movement, but for years I didn't. And so I would get up and do cardio early before I was awake and could realize how much and with what a deep and unabiding passion I loathed it because I hate cardio. So it's, I know you were wide awake, but I think if I were to decide, okay, I'm going to start running, it would need to be at the crack of dawn before I was completely aware of what I was doing. Well, it's actually, it's until funny. I was outside. It's funny that you say that because I think I was going through a stretch where I was running in the afternoons because I was home and I was working for myself and to be frank, I still had my workout clothes on from the morning. So, you know, I would wake up, I'd go to CrossFit, come back, do kid thing, do work thing. And then um, I, I would usually like maybe sneak in a mile before I picked up at bus stop. You know, do I was like, oh, I just leave 15 minutes early, get a run in and then pick up the kids at the bus. Um, and I was already in my workout clothes. And so it worked out and then I would shower after dinner and kind of, I was on that schedule for a while and I've been trying to recreate that, but it's not working. And again, I found myself trying to retrofit something that was working into my current, you know, mindset yes. schedule. Whatever. And you know what I mean? Then you, and you get, and it's just, I was like, no, I need to reinvent. And I think this is the one thing that I think people don't do or don't realize in a weird way that if, if things aren't working, you have to, instead of, trying to force it and then feeling bad that you're not doing it. Like I was feeling bad. I wasn't running. I had to like, I have to like come up with a new way it fits or if it even fits or if I move on to something else or whatever. So I think when I woke up at five, I was like, well, I could, if I'm up early and I know I'm going to have a half hour because I mean, there's nobody up and I'm not one of those people that makes coffee and sits and reads the paper. That's not me. So I'm up and then I'm basically twiddling my thumbs for a half hour until it's time to leave for my class. So then I'm like, well, if this, if I get enough sleep and I go to bed early enough, well, now I found my little running window, but well, I'll just run before I go yes. to class. So we'll see though. We'll see if it, if it's something I do more than just this one time. <laughs> well, and it again, makes me think two things, which I'm really trying to do with the yoga. I am desperate to figure out because I'm a Luddite who works in social media. I cannot figure out. Okay, I haven't tried yet, but it seems like I won't be able to. How to stream apps on the television. Because I am not going to, apparently I'm not dedicated. I'm not going to prop my damn laptop on a chair and then do Warrior 2, that we're facing dog. I'm not going to do that trying to look at my Mac. So I need it on the television in front of me. I don't even, I gave away all my DVDs. I had 8 million yoga DVDs and I gave I them all away because too. I wasn't using them. So I need to figure that out. But if you view your entire day through the lens of like we talk about, where can I fit in my run? And I examine each morning, I think, where can I fit in yoga? And a lot of times, honestly, the answer is nowhere because I'm at the mercy of the class schedule. But right. I just get up each day and scrutinize that and see where it fits. So speaking of this yoga, yes, this is exactly, and it's funny, I yes. just, I just took yoga. I just came from yoga uh, and there's a class. So I've been wanting to take, there's only about, uh, I think five yoga classes at the gym that's by my house. And yes, I just got done tailing the instructor today because they are talking, there's power yoga and there's restorative yoga and there's regular yoga. I don't know <laughs> what to call it. I should Vinyasa. be more into restorative. Yeah. So I, and I've been wanting to take the restorative, which is what on, what's on, offered on Thursdays at 10 15. So it works out perfect. It's oh, Thursday interesting that it's in the morning. Is it's it in too? The, it's an hour. Tiring? You're relaxing. I'm not getting the words right. Cause I think I would want restorative like at seven o'clock. 
well, this is the first time I've taken it. So I didn't know what to expect. And I've been wanting to take it for a really long time, but I had work and I couldn't take hours away and whatever. So I was like, okay, I got everything done today. Wow. I submitted my project. I still had a couple hours. I said, I'm going to go check it out today. So I did. It was a little too relaxing for me. Like, I think if I'm going to give up an hour, I want to challenge my body in some way. Like that's, that's right. yes. That's yes. what I feel during the day. So, but that sure. said, it was, it was also kind of like a fun, just get away from screens, hour, listen to relaxing music and sit. Cause it, what they did was they'll just do poses for a really long time and not challenging poses, like really simple, like, like child's pose, just sit in child's pose for like three minutes. Um, and then she's guiding your breathing and she's having, you know, so it's one of those. And that's like what they that call yeah, I could see that being like a more relaxing. I think they do do one at night. There's another one called power yoga. But anyway, I, I was talking to her. She's like, oh, what did you think? And I was like, oh, it was good. You know, it was nice and relaxing. And I said, I go, to be honest, I'm kind of a slave. This is, was my exact quote. I'm a little bit of slave to my schedule. So like whatever yoga I could get, I'm just going to take. Like, <laughs> So if it's Yes, you know I often I mean? go to yoga with weights and I don't do weights because I'm still working on the foundation of not being the wobbliest one. And so I don't use weights. And I always say to the instructor just that, I need to come when I can fit it in, I can come. I'm not yes. using weights. I'm not there yes. yet. So I can't, so I did, this was the only class I could come to today. And I think like, yes, on Wednesdays, they have the power yoga, I believe. It not, I don't know. They have one at 9 a.m. I thought, well, again, if I don't have an active project with the client, I could probably make that. Yes. Um, and then I take the regular yoga. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not like versed in yoga. I think it's just, it's the normal one that just flows. You know, you're just constantly flowing through Chaturanga, so downward. Yeah. Vinyasa, yeah. So it's one of those. And I actually really, pre I've been meaning to tell the instructor because she's great. And I, like, I really wanted, she changes it up just enough every time where it's like, oh, it's not just a repeat of the class before. It's different cadence but so yeah so i'm proud of myself i got a run in today and yoga and and i took crossfit because i that's just so embedded in my okay i gotta get i gotta something i gotta get moving <laughs> i'll be right back i haven't done anything yet today but that and that comes into the yoga thing of i've been struggling because struggling i've been noticing that some of the classes i can fit in aren't what I want. They're not vinyasa. Yes. They don't energize me. But here's been my focus and it's been such a realization for me, which I would imagine, and maybe not, but I initially thought you were going to talk about, it was a mile and it was, I can't believe I ran a mile. I'm back into this. But at one point in your running career, you might've looked back and thought it was just a mile. Oh, I'm not going to lie. I pretty much said it was just a mile. To me. Yeah, <laughs> but, I, but I was so yoga. Yoga. But I was proud of myself that I got out there. That's that, to be honest, but yes. And I think that same thing when I go and I'm really working on my mindset because so much of this for me is mindset that besides the fact when I'm at yoga and it could be the easiest yoga ever, I am moving in ways I would not at home. If I decided yes. not to take a break and go to yoga, I am not in child's pose. I'm like moving in the same way all day long. But more than that, and this might be a little bit crazy, but it's really helped me visualize. I've started thinking when it's restorative classes, slow flow, things that... I love the vinyasa. I really love hot vinyasa. For some reason, I'm not really type A, but I like working hard if it's during the day. Mm -hmm. I think of it as wringing, <laughs> wringing myself out. When I go and it's slow flow and we're twisting and holding, I think I feel so much better. I am like a sponge. I have wrung out all the crap from my body. No, it probably is literally not true, but it feels great. No, and I can see that. And don't, well, don't they say what you visualize actually matters too? Like the fact that you imagine that, like they're always the, doing the whole cues of like melt, you know, like you're letting go all of your stress and it's falling away from your Yes. Body. You know, and like, so I guess, so I guess if you imagine yourself wringing yourself out and it's just like refreshing and it's just re-energizing you, then I think those are the imageries that are helping, you know what I mean? That help you, that that's actually good. I do feel that way too. Like no, I, nothing's better than a good twist. Just twisting and then And it's that it. mindset. Yeah. Because I used to get really angry when, not a good reflection on me, I have a good friend that goes to yoga with me and if she goes and it was supposed to be like intense vinyasa and she gets there and they've shifted the class to an hour long of meditation, she is so zen. She will say to me, oh, I guess this is what I needed today. Oh, Whereas yeah. my reaction would be, oh, I wanted vinyasa. So I yeah. started to try to view it like that. If I go to a class 
and they spend so much time talking and reading from different books and quoting things. I really am trying to shift my mindset to, oh, this must be what I needed today. That, and it's that, been a stretch. I'm a work in progress. I was say, that might be a little too zen for me. <laughs> yes, it's been, and which almost becomes the more meta of, and that's why it happened because it's too zen for me. And so it's really been funny. And each time I leave and my first instinct is to think, man, that was not what I needed. It was super easy and I'm not even good at this. I immediately switch it to, wow, that must have been just what I needed. I'm so glad I came. And it's really helped. That's cool. Well, yeah. I mean, if you, oh, well, I, I, to be honest, I guess I felt a little bit about that today. I was like, oh, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. But then I was like, but it was great. I feel relaxed. It was good. You know, I mean, yes. so I think I na you naturally like change your, I mean, you could be bitter about it all day or you could just say, hey, I just, I was lucky enough to spend an hour in yoga today. That's pretty cool. Even though it's not what I thought yes. it was. And it's that quote, and I've almost put this on the Wick Wick page a bunch of times, and now I probably still will, that I love about... Was it a bad five? Was it a bad day, or was it a bad five minutes that you what either right. carried around with you all day or moaned about all day? And I think that's what it is. So yes, yes I'm really working on changing my perspective with that yoga, mm -hmm. all of it, and just I get what I need. And even when what I think I need is push ups and sweating and full wheel and flipping the dog, sometimes something in the universe perhaps knows better. And I just need to wring out my crap that I've been working on for the first half of the day and be able to approach the second half a little more empty in a good way. Or it is just what it is. <laughs> and then we don't try to wrap extra meeting into it because that's another thing we probably should work on. As in, you may have wanted it, but it's not necessarily a need. You just, this is what you had available, so this is what you took. And there's no... See, I have always been for the last few years working on the, it's just is things just are <laughs> sitting in the ambiguity. Yes. Things just are. And you know what? It helps me yes. so much, especially with relationships with other people. Like when you think, you know, oh, oh, yes. yeah, I just go, it just is They, you know, they don't want to come to the party or whatever. It's not, it's not that they hate you or it's just, they just don't want to come. It just is. <laughs> so, so generally I try to remind myself of that. So you are okay. Wrapping this up perfect ending of you really are that zen like well your first instinct it's interesting you're like i'm not that zen and that's exactly it you are that zen already maybe i'm too zen maybe i'm over zen <laughs> <laughs> yes oh my gosh yeah that's funny too zen for you. well actually this well i don't know do you have a cool transition because i actually have a transition i do not I, so i, I have a I transition so what i brought to the table today um Which i have a I friend love. i have a friend who's a he's um He's more of a coach than a friend. I, I would like to think he's a friend, <laughs> but more than likely we more have like a coach, uh, coach, coachy, how trainee trainer kind of relationship. Um, but he's our guest. He used to train a lot at our gym. Uh, okay. and he, he comes back now. He was moved to New Jersey. So we only see him every few weeks and he comes back to do a Olympic lifting course. And I always get like, like tons of nuggets from this guy. Like he's just, first of all, he's probably about five, five. He weighs about 95 pounds. <laughs> He can lift like 18 times his body weight and he's like a little monkey. Like he just, it's amazing. Uh, his flexibility, his strength, it's just awe inspiring. Um, and like I said, I usually, I learn lots from him, not only in Olympic lifting, but just in life. Like he always like, for example, I'll give you an example. Last Which is time, a sign of a great coach. Yes. Oh yeah. This guy has, I mean, he was born to be a coach. It, it's, he, he's really good at it. Um, and last class he, uh, like he gave an example. So I'll, I'll lay some. I mean, you might know. I don't know how how much Olympic lifting have you done. I don't even know if you do that stuff. Let me. Okay, let me think. None. <laughs> okay. All right. So I mean, I've done the lifts, but not like competitively. So I do. I mean, I don't do competitively either. But we do a lot of cleans and jerks, and clean yes, and jerks, and, and snatching. Yes. So both these movements start with the barbell on the ground, and you have to slowly, you know, go from the ground. Like, and there's like almost like uh, points you need to hit. You know, your knees have to go back. The bar comes yes. into your body. You snatch it up. And really, the it's not – I mean, it's strength, of course, but it's more technique. And once you have the yeah. technique, it's like muscle memory and you get it. And now I've been working on this for four years, and I'm finally starting to actually get it. It's taken me a really long time. So he gave a example, the one class, about um, how – like his, my uh, he always yells at me, you're going too fast off the ground. <laughs> because in my mind, it's 
let me get as much momentum so I can get this bar over my yes, head. But in actuality, you need to go slow. So then he says, think about it this way. When you have a relay race and you know you have the person waiting and the you know the person running, the, the person who's waiting for the baton starts to run. They start to jog and then they run. And while the other person runs up, they meet, you know, they're like, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Boom, pass the baton. He's like, you need to be thinking about that as you're lifting the bar off the ground. Are you ready? Are you ready? Am I hit my spots? Am I hit my spots? And then boom, you do the lift. And oh, I, yes. And it seems so stupid actually now that I say it out loud. No, it doesn't. But that actually that really sense. helped me. Yeah. And I thought, so now in a, ever since he said this to me weeks ago, every time I have to do a lift, I'm literally thinking of the person catching the baton. And I'm thinking to myself, all right, am I ready? Am I ready? And I and lift. <laughs> And I thought that's that yeah. little. So anyway, this gives you just a little insight. He's like one of those guys that he just understands what to say to you individually to have things click, which is very powerful. So he wrote the article. He did not yeah, write the it. article. He did oh. not write the article. He shared the article. Oh, so yeah. and I so I follow him on Facebook and he shares all these cute things every once in a while. And it's always a peek into a world that I don't feel a part I'm of or that I don't found it when you sent it. I was like, you are living in a whole realm that I had no <laughs> idea. So I was very so, impressed. Yeah, so he said he posted this article about. Um, so this gentleman passed away. His name is Bob Duggan, who I never heard of, never knew, you know, don't have no idea who he was. And it's this article. Apparently, this guy is like the grandfather of acupuncture. Like he's, I think he's pretty much responsible for bringing acupuncture yes. to the United States. He's like, he was the co founder of the Acupuncture Institute. Like he, this is like the, the zenist guy we have. <laughs> so he passed away recently. Um, and so the people who are in that community wrote a lot of posts about him. I actually went back and watched one of his TED Talks because there was a TED Talk he did. Um, I have to say, he's a little too zen for me. He was a little too, like, uh, over the top. Um, sometimes, like, he lost me sometimes. So I was like, okay. During the talk. I kind of understand what you're saying, but you're also a little too crunchy granola for me right now. So anyway, one of the articles that he shared recently was about this um, Bob Duggan, and it was written by someone else who, who was also inspired by this man, and it's called um, Upset is Optional and Nine Other Life Lessons in Loving Memory of Bob Duggan. So there's a few of these little nuggets that the, this person learned from this gentleman who passed away that I thought I would pass on because some of them I thought were pretty good, and I figured we would just see what our reactions to them was. Uh, yeah, and the first one was Upset is Optional. And it says, choose not to live in the drama. We have a choice in how we relate to what's happening and perspective we take on, the perspective we take on it. The idea that we have a choice with how we respond to life circumstances brings freedom, which I love. It's kind of my, oh, so th my response to this is that it just is. <laughs> this is how. And we can't control anyone else but ourselves, right. us and, and our reaction, which is really powerful. Like I used to think when I was little, younger, little <laughs> said it was fatalistic we can't control anybody else but ourselves that's depressing and now i realize how powerful it is ourselves in our reaction we have total control over how we react to something yes yes this is something it's i'm battling in my, measure. i'm battling in my household right now i don't know i live with three boys men i don't know what you say males <laughs> and i feel like their default reaction for everything is anger, anger. oh interesting it's over here it's like <sighs> Tears and drama with the girls. Oh, see, I don't know. Oh, we have a little tears and drama, I think, just because based on age. But yes, I think, I don't know if it's a male thing, but like even my husband, they're all, it's just, he gets an email at work, it's anger. The kids do something oh, wrong, it's anger. Yeah. And then my boys too, like they lose a game, it's anger. They accidentally drop a plate and it breaks, it's anger. And I was like, guys, <laughs> this is too much anger in my house right now. So I'm like, we have to learn how to like respond in a different way. Um, so it's kind of, it, it's one of those things where I have accepted it, but sometimes when you're being surrounded by other people who don't maybe understand how to control their reactions to things, then I have to control my reaction to their reactions. It's kind of like a uh, meta. Yeah. Like Shakespeare's play within a play. <laughs> exactly. It's a little inception yes. moment. Like, um, yes. yeah. So I, anyway, upset is optional, which I think something is, it is, it's really I powerful love that. to realize that you control that. And I think it's like a muscle too. I think it's something you get better at. Like, with And I love the phrasing. Like it's been not really beaten to death, but we, all those memes about you can only control yourself in reaction to situations. I love those three words. Upset is optional. Speak volumes. I love that. I do. My thing, my, my other go-to is I don't do drama. 
And so when things are annoying me, I go, I just don't do drama and I walk away. <laughs> so the second one is, and this one I absolutely love because I truly believe this. And you helpful. practice it. Yes. Allow yourself to be a beginner. It's okay to make mistakes. In fact, that's how we learn any stage of life, which I feel like I'm in the mid stage now. Um, allowing oneself to be a beginner opens up a bigger world of possibility, progress, and change. So yes, I am struggling through this guitar <laughs> and I have to keep reminding myself that it's a beginner. And I do feel like it's helping me almost put other things in perspective. And uh, yeah, so I think start learning something new. I've been, that's the one thing I want to instill in my kids is to constantly be students of something to learn something or experience something new and i think you nail it with the and i see it in friends it's easy to get caught up in the masturbation to quote albert ellis what should i do no what do you want to do anything it's that it keeps our brain elastic and young no matter what it is we're learning yes i agree and for me i think it's the i i kind of I almost want to see if I can do things. I'm like, oh, I wonder. Yeah, I feel like we look at other people who are expertise at certain things and you think you, you never see the work that went into it. You just see the byproduct. Now, you know, you see some guy playing the guitar and you're like, oh, he's so good. I'm never going to get that good. But you didn't see, you know, the fact that he's been playing for 30 years or however long, like you'd never see that. And so in a weird way, I'm at the stage where I was like, I want to see what happens when I practice. 20 minutes a day well, for the next two years. Like The second half of that is because you're always putting yourself out there. I know bowling wasn't new, but you're always trying new things. You're not overly invested. Oh my gosh, I tried the guitar. I can't do this. I'm horrible. I'm a failure as a person because you know, well, there'll be another new thing you try. Not that that's the guitar experience for you, but when you're continually trying new things, you're not oddly overly invested in one, you realize, ah, oh, this isn't my deal. It's her deal. That's awesome for her. I wonder if I'd be good at baking and decorating cookies. And you keep learning. Yeah, that's things. interesting. I never really thought of, it's funny you bring up the bowling too, because I never really thought, of, I mean, I've bowled like just recreational, but being in a league where I'm now doing it and not, you know, I've gotten better, but I also, you almost have to look at it too in your way of realistic. I'm like, I'm never going to be a pro bowler. Yes. <laughs> and that's okay. I'm enjoying it at my level in a way. And I actually, there is a pro bowler who goes to my gym. So I get to talk to her, you know, she's like literally her a hundred pins better than I am. But to just acknowledge the fact that I'm a beginner at this and this is fun and I'm not doing it for any other reason, except for having an outlet and being social and being, and like accepting that I don't have to be great at everything. I'll yes. never be a great guitar player, but you know what? It would be fun to like bang out a song that I've practiced you know at a campfire when we're camping or something that would be like that would be fun like that's setting realistic goals i think is um especially instead of i think a lot of people go into learning something new like they're going to be an expert at it or if it's not going to be a passion that's going to take over their lives what's the point when actually i feel like the opposite if i can just touch everything and taste everything that's like the power of life like i can experience guitar playing i can experience bowling i can experience crossfit i can i'm not you know i'm not going to be in the olympics olympic lifting but i've experienced olympic lifting like that's awesome yes. so i'm kind of a touch a lot of things kind of person yeah well and i think that's why i loved how this was articulated because every single article says try new things but it's that first word here which i loved allow give yourself yes. permission so yeah. i loved i loved how it was phrased Yes. So, all right. We don't have to break into each and every single one of these. I will definitely share the article, but I did, I did thought this article had a lot of, um, I don't know, like little ones. Some of them are, are like one is listen, truly listen and pay more attention. Of course, like we all have to listen. Um, so some of them I thought were a little, uh, cheesy maybe is the right word, but other ones I thought it's a good way he's phrasing that. I never thought of it that way. And what about number five? This one, I'll let you read it. Made me think, Oh, this More is a good one. one for us would be the maybe adding in you after the word future. So number five, will this serve the future generations? Yes. Um, and how we talk about in the book of what you do today, how you treat yourself is do something that your future self will thank you for. So I thought of both of those with this. I love the big picture. And then I also love the reflecting back on ourselves. Yes. Actually, this is that not a good transition for your Seth Godin piece, possibly? I know. Let me pull that up. Did you Let's know that? Up. Did you do that purposely? No, I did not that. <laughs> Maybe I, I am a transitioner. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I've already monetized it. I've got brands all over the <laughs> right. yeah. This next one, it is, I keep reading this and 
I think that I'm pretty average intelligence. And the more I read it, the more I start thinking, am I missing something? Because it oh, seems I'm, super clear to I'm me. I'm not going to lie. When you sent it to me and I read it, I was like, I, I got to read that again. I'm not sure. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I love Seth Godin. And if you're not familiar with him, he, to me, epitomizes the, uh, Lordy, I'm going to say it's Charles Dickens, but that might not be it. But the quote of, sorry, this letter is so long. I did not have time to make it shorter because his blog posts are so unbelievably terse. Yes, I love and that. You know, that. they must have started out really long and he edits them down to be that short. I think that every time I write a blog post that's like 2,000 words and I go back to revise it, I'm like, yeah, it's really easy to write long. So I love him because he distills everything down typically to ways that I'm like, oh, I get it. It's so funny because I've been reading him for, I don't know, 10 years or something, but I don't think the opposite. <laughs> You and I are so oh, often yeah. in this because for me, it's harder to write. It's harder to write a lot. It's harder to write a lot. It's easy for me. Well, to but terse. he does good, like with the terse. I mean, anybody can do super short. He does the terse. No, he pack definitely packs a punch in like a few sentences. Yes, I think that's what it is. It's that ability to. I just think he's super talented at it. I just think. Oh my gosh, he's amazing. <laughs> so he had this post, and I was really thinking. I've been focusing forever on really trying to be present, especially as. And yesterday was Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement, Jewish holiday, went to services, and the child didn't go to school. And she came home, and we had a little bit of time in between the afternoon service and the night service. And I was fasting all day. You're supposed to fast sundown to sundown. She was not. And she decided that she wanted to braid her hair into as many braids as she could. She looked like Coolio. and Because she then wanted it to be ruffly when she took it out in the morning. <laughs> And so my first thought was, oh my gosh, can we not do this when I haven't had a sip of water or anything to eat since seven o'clock last night? But then I thought, you know what? Be present, enjoy this moment. It's going so quickly. So I'm really focused on the now. So I see his post come through my email and it says, now is never, but here comes tomorrow. And this was Tuesdays, so the day before yesterday. And I thought, okay, I need to read this. So it's really short. He says- yeah, you can read it. Everything you're working on is an investment in tomorrow. Okay, I got that with Seth. Okay, what I'm doing today, the future self, exactly like we were talking about. Right. While we can choose to enjoy the process, the end result is always at the end of an arc, always the result of many steps of earning trust and building a connection. I agreed with that. I liked the, his use of the word arc because it made me think of fiction that I'm writing and the story arc. But here's where he lost me. If you view any particular day without context, it is almost certain to be a failure because now never happens. The results always happen later. Since later is just around the corner, today, right now, is the perfect time to begin. Now is the moment we get to plant the seeds for later. End of the entire post. So I kind of, the last couple sentences later is right around the corner. We always talk about, yeah, don't wait for Monday. If you want to get fit or change your health right now, now is the moment we get to plant the seeds for later. So I think you and I both agree on that piece. And here's what I wanted to know your thoughts on and truly whether I was indeed missing the entire point of it. And I would love if other people read it, hear it and have thoughts if you view any particular day without context, it's almost certain to be a failure. Like thinking about your day. I mean, I know not every day is the morning that you find that time to get up and run. But even yesterday, I thought I did absolutely no work, nothing. But was the day a failure? No, because I wanted to tell her, just go braid your own damn hair by yourself. But instead, we did it together and I was present and that's a success. I can't think of one day where the day was a complete failure. Yeah. I, you know what? It's funny now that you read it, I feel like I've taken it in better, like differently. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like when what I was did reading you think it before. So at first I was like, I totally agreed with you. I was like, I don't like, I, I agree with everything in the post, except for that line. If you view any particular day without context, it is almost certain to be a failure because now never happens. The result always happens later. I feel like if you break that into two thoughts, it makes no sense. But if you take it all as one, it does. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to articulate this, but it makes, it makes more sense if you think about, like I'll, I'll relate it to dieting. 
right? I thought that too with yes. like non-scale victories that I may today might be a failure because I'm only halfway to losing a hundred pounds, but I got these pants up over my hips and I'm a blink away from wearing them. That's a not a yes. failure. Well, I think if you, uh, oh, it's so funny how I, it's like, I kind of get it now, but I'm still like, my brain is processing how to actually articulate it out. But the, I think the power is in the phrase, the results always happen later. As in, if you, um, if you have your eye set on a goal, like weight loss or learning the guitar or whatever, uh, then day by day, it, it doesn't it's so, have, and Is it anti-wick-wick? -wick? I mean, because I started thinking, is it day by day? These steps are so incremental, you might not even notice. Because I was writing another article on, for somebody on What You Can When You Can and talking about what we've discussed with the, it's forward movement, even it's, it's barely perceptible. And so I thought during these days where he's saying we take them separately, they might be a failure. No, if there's one tiny shuffle forward or not moving backwards, it's a success. Yeah, yeah. I feel like it's very much a keep your eye on the prize. And as long as you do every day is a success. Is that what he's saying? <laughs> I don't know. Like if you don't. And like, maybe it's more business. I started thinking about that. Yeah. You know, well, he's because coming he's, yes. from marketing and all that stuff. And we're trying to. Yes. Us. So if I'm selling pencils and my goal is to sell a million pencils by the end of 2016 and you look at my Tuesday. Yeah, I guess I see what he's saying. Oh, you're a failure. You didn't sell a million pencils today. So yeah, maybe that's, that's the perspective. That's the same as weight loss though. Like I didn't lose a hundred pounds today, but I stayed with, I mean, I guess if you think about it this way, like because the fact that your goal is something that can't happen immediately, like weight loss, if your goal is something like weight loss, that can't happen immediately. If you look at just one day of say, I kept my food journal today and I took a walk and I didn't eat those cupcakes that were at the office, you still have a hundred pounds to lose. So if you evaluate it that way, you would look at that day as a failure, even though it's actually a success, <laughs> right? Once you put it in context yes. of you baby stepping from your goals, it's then a success. So I think what he's trying to say is, um, if you don't keep, if you don't put what you're doing day by day in context, as in these things may look from the outside as a failure because I woke up and I'm still a hundred pounds overweight. Um, but when you look at it in the context of everything I did today inched me closer to what my final goal is, then it makes sense. Which is super wick wick to me. So that's why I was drawn to it. Yes. I, the only way I could even begin to think, okay, Seth, I see what you're saying is by imagining a huge puzzle and taking out one piece and thinking, oh, out of context, this is nothing. But when you put it in, see, I don't know. That, it's a puzzle. It's a puzzle. <laughs> right. Well, like if you look back, if you, so if you're at the end of the arc and you've lost the hundred pounds, when you look back, it was all those quote unquote failed, you know, like if you looked at all the days that led up to that goal out of context, they were just other days where, you know what I mean? And maybe one day you kept your food journal, one day you didn't, or week by week, you lost a pound, you gained a pound, but now you're at the end of the arc. All those days were successes because they left, you know, I'm thinking about from the opposite way. Yes. I don't know if that's that probably, seem, that probably muddied the that water. That seems so wick wick. So I'd be curious if anybody else has a take on this. I just read it and thought, because typically I read his stuff and think, oh my gosh, I would not have thought of that. That's exactly it. I got stuck on the, if you view any particular day without context, it is almost certain to be a failure. And I just, I may perhaps as well, I'm not result oriented. I am, but I'm old enough to realize it's that tiny shuffle. I didn't even realize I took that, had, that will move me forward tomorrow. I didn't even realize it yet. Right. Well, if you think about it, that is the ultimate wick wick. Uh, you know, that's what we talk about in the book is that every little thing we do, if we don't think about it in the sense of we, we easily can throw, and I use this expression all the time. It's like my go-to throw our hands up and say, ah, today was a failure. Um, when you look at the day without context, but if you look at the day as, hey, I still I still got my run in and I got to make it to yoga today, even though the end of the day I ate three cupcakes, <laughs> whatever it's, you know what I mean? Like with context, I still did what I could do in that day to get me closer to what my end goal is. You just but, nailed it. That would, that's exactly, I think what he's saying that you got to add mic drop. <laughs> that, do I, do I that is, yes. And I still don't know that I agree with him, but that helps me frame it a little better and Brett, yes that does help me frame it a little bit better it is a little it is a little uh 
if you don't think about it, it's a little hard to get. Like I'm still like I. And now the more I'm talking about it, the more I totally see what he's saying. But it took me it took me about a couple hours to figure it out. Now that we've pondered it for a little while, <laughs> and I think as with all things, it wouldn't work for me because I need to think whatever happened today, I go to bed and I'm granted the gift of a fresh 24 hours. And in that moment, the only thing that is important are those 24 hours in context, out of context. And that's how I keep getting up and doing the best I can. So I think maybe it resonates with some people and it just doesn't resonate with me. Yes. Yeah. I think you have to intellectually think about it. Like, and I used to do this thing called the 24 hour challenge where it was the whole, oh, that was exactly what the whole idea was like, Hey, just get through today. <laughs> today. So don't think about the end. Don't think about whatever. Let's just, what's your goals for today? Keep your food journal, get your run in. Da, 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 yes. da. And then at the end yes. of the day, you feel good. And then guess what? You wake up tomorrow and then you have another 24 hour challenge. And when you think about it in those contexts, it doesn't seem as overwhelming. I think, but for some people, some people are okay with the fact that, hey, I have 100 pounds to lose and these, and every day I'm working towards that and that keeps them motivated. But other people are like, I can't even think about that 100 pounds. I got to think about today. Yes. today keep... And I think it's just the way two people are like, you know, I know when I actually lost 70 pounds, it was, I couldn't, I didn't have an end goal. I didn't, I couldn't think about it. I had to think about, I was a weekly thinker. <laughs> I just wanted to get through the week. That was my, that was my goal. And so that was what I can almost digest and handle. So I think some people can handle like minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day, week, but you know, some people can handle that long frame. Hey, this goal is going to take me three years and they're okay oh with that. Gosh. I know I would <laughs> never get up. Okay. But yes. So I found this really fascinating and was trying to decide in the end, I don't think it is indirect opposition to what we say, the little small steps, big change. No, I think, it's, I just, just, I think it's just me. framed. It's just framed a different way. Yeah. I think. Yeah, totally. Totally, totally. Wow. We have reached the end of another exciting episode. What did we talk about? I don't even know. <laughs> Some, yeah. Allowing ourselves to begin, be beginners and allowing ourselves yeah. to wring out the bad emotions at yoga. Maybe I'm so zen because I did take yoga in the middle of the day. <laughs> Maybe next week I shall not take restorative yoga a half hour before we record our podcast. It is a big step for me. Don't need any context, Seth, sorry, to realize and not be, not go to yoga middle of the day and have it not be what I want and not get angry. I mean, I should be embarrassed, but I'm not. I used to get super grumpy if I went because I think like you said, taking an hour and 20 minutes for this, 10 minutes each way, an hour in the class. And if it's not what I, I think I needed, it would make me mad. So I'm proud of myself. That's been a baby step that is like a huge step. Yes. Changing your reaction to yes. oh. the situation. Mm -hmm. Upset is optional, Carla. Upset is <laughs> optional. Yes. <laughs> you have pulled that string that has wrapped up our episode. So not only, let me get this right, not only did I transition us twice successfully today, but I wrapped it up from the beginning and brought it back. I, I feel now I, I today is a success. <laughs> if we had any extra money left over from our patrons, did you know that you can sponsor the podcast? Yes. I would give it to you. But we do not. <laughs> we do not. Yet. not. Not yet. Not yet. Yes. If you need to know what Carla's talking about, um, we will have a link in this week's podcast. And you can help support the Wick Wick podcast and keep us on the air by helping us um, make a dent in some of our expenses to keep the podcast alive. On that note, I think we're signing off, Carla. Until next week, Wick Wick. Wick Wick. All right, we did it. <laughs> And I thought it was really good and not